Hey guys, today I'm going to get into a technique that blew my mind in astrology because most of us want to know when things are going to get better or when things are really going to change. There's so many transits, so many things if you're into astrology or if you're just getting into you know, astrology and tarot in general. New, no, you're like, but when are things going to get better? When are things going to get changed? And I did find a technique which like floored me, okay? Because I went through it. I went through my old journals. I used to write everything down and literally it pinpointed the times where big major shifts happened in my life. So I'm going to go into that technique. I'm going to go through examples in my own chart and it's really fun and it's really mind blowing, especially if you have it done for yourself. So this is also a technique I offer through doing readings and I'm really excited about it, really excited to share. So let's go. Okay. So the technique that blew my mind is called distributions, circumambulations through the bounds. You can find this on AstroSeek. You would go to home, free horoscopes, traditional astrology, circumambulations, distributions, and then you're going to enter your info and it's going to give you some big dates of when things are going to shift for you. Like literally, I'm going to do my example. I've seen this in other people's lives, but like I've always kept journals. Unfortunately, I actually got rid of them recently, but when I looked at this technique, I looked through my journals, all the major big shifts, big life decisions, happens like on around the dates of these distributions of the bounds. So I just entered my information and it's going to give you this list. Um, it's so oh, for, I'll go through it real quick. So they have a time Lord here. So the things in the gray represents where your ascendant over time is going to shift. So this is what's called like a, a sh like a progression, like a time Lord technique where like, if you look at a chart, right, you have the ascendant. So here's my ascendant. It's at 27 degrees. And there's a technique that was done by um, or perfected by medieval astrologers where over time they were like, your ascendant actually shifts throughout your chart. And it tells you, different things. So it's basically moving this ascendant through your chart. And as it goes through your chart, it's going to hit different bound lords. So you see these different tiny pie pieces here. These are what's called the bounds. And it's considered that the ascendant or your chart has a contract with this planet. So this planet, whatever planet is in the bounds, has rulership over your life and what's going to be happening. So um, to start my life out with, I had my ascendant at 27 degrees and it is in the bounds of Mars. So let me go back to the website. So you'll see that in this list here. So the very first time Lord that I have is Mars because my ascendant, as I showed you, is at 27 degrees Sagittarius in the bounds of Mars. So basically all of these planets is going to show you like next my ascendant is going to go into zero degrees Capricorn and go into zero degrees Capricorn and Mercury is the first bound Lord. So that's the basics of it. It isn't more of an advanced technique. So I recommend getting a reading to figure this out from yours truly. I don't know anybody else that used this technique besides Benjamin Dyke. So if you're interested in getting this type of reading, you'll want to book with me. I have my info below, valentinelister.com. But let's see what this technique is about first, okay? Um, and then you're going to see like planets in these other colors, right? So you see Jupiter and it's in blue. And then you see Saturn that is in red and the moon. So basically the second part is that wherever this ascendant is, there's a planet that aspects it. So basically, wherever the ascendant is, so let's say like my ascendant starts in Mars. Mars is going to have rulership over my that period of life. So wherever Mars is in my chart, it's right here. And whatever houses it rules, that's going to be the focus of my life overall. But then we're going to figure out, well, how is that going to get carried out? What is actually going to happen? What is the meat of it? <laughs> like, how is that? Gonna, how are those things going to happen? And what this technique lo looks at is what planet most closely aspects your ascendant. So they said the first planet that aspects my ascendant through the bounds is Jupiter. Okay, so they didn't like right like at the first off the bat, it's not like doing a planet, you know, I'm zero years old or one years old. But when this ascendant hits Mercury, 
the first planet that aspects it the closest is this Jupiter here. So when my ascendant went into Mercury, I'm going to look at Mercury in my chart, which is my first house, my personality, my relationships, my career. And then it's going to say that how that gets carried out is Jupiter in the 12th. So I did have a lot of loss early on and I did have hidden enemies, a lot of people bullying me or not having my best interest or having situations of abuse in my life, early in my life. So this chart just verifies that. But don't you want to get to the good stuff? You don't want to hear about the depressing stuff. You want to know when your life is going to get better. And that's why I'm doing this video. And that's why I do readings for people to give you hope that things are going to get better because they will. Okay. So when did things happen? What are some major things, major shifts and changes? So first of all, I'm, I'm going to only, I'll go through my actual chart like to show you some deeper examples, but let's look at, let's go through this. So Mercury is talked about myself and the suffering, blah, blah, blah. Then actually, yeah. So then my ascendant moved into the bounds of Jupiter and that is when things got extra tough. So before that, I actually had friends. It was more family issues because we had Jupiter carrying out the aspects of my life. So it rules the house of my family issues and myself. So the difficulties were more from my family and more from maybe the way I presented myself or was taught how to act. And so that is the first time like family patterns got highlighted for me that I wanted to work on and overcome later on. So this 12th house, it may indicate suffering early. Like for me, it's earlier on in life. Later on, things were difficult, but you know, I have worked on those things. So I have Venus as my next bound ruler, and that happens around 1998. And that's when I got my first boyfriend from high school. And that was super amazing and super good. A big shift in my life. I still had some difficulties. So Jupiter is still... Um, the planet that is carrying things out. But because Venus was like the overall ruler of my life then, um, and it's a benefic planet, this Venus made me feel good and gave me hope in this period of life, which was, that was 1998 to 2004. So Venus is, Ven Venus, Venus is carrying out things in 1998. And so it's in my second house. And I was like, at that time, I was like, I have to have a boyfriend. So I want to find a boyfriend. I want to find a relationship. I got Venus and Capricorn here. And I did. I got a great boyfriend. My high school boyfriend was probably like my healthiest relationship. He was the best. He treated me like a queen, right? And part of it is, okay, Venus ruled my 11th house of dreams, hopes, dreams, and wishes, and groups of friends, groups of people who can help you out. And that is when I did connect with a group of friends where I found my uh, first serious boyfriend. Um, I did have some difficulty, some heartbreak, like really shortly prior to that, but that was okay because I have Saturn here. And I also like did get like scholarships. I connected to groups that helped me out with my career. I have my midheaven here. So that was generally good. Like Venus is ruling this really good house, the house of good spirit, the 11th house of friends. And it also rules the sixth house. So um, Venus ruled the sixth house. So that is also where I started drinking and partying and hanging out with friends and hitting it too hard. This is the house of challenges. So sometimes like substance use can be the sixth house. I don't have an addiction. So it was never got that bad, but it is where I started partying with the sixth house and being a little bit reckless and rebellious. And also where I started wanting to help, help people with mental health issues. So I'd struggled with mental health issues. And actually that is like I did start going to counseling because we have Jupiter here but it did get me into the zone of where I wanted to like help people or advocate people I was thinking that might be part of my career um, and part of that is if we go back to this list Jupiter is still carrying out issues so I did struggle with mental health but that this is the time where I actually went for help where I unfortunately was hospitalized but then then I did go out go for counseling and I started to become interested in becoming a counselor I did eventually do counseling as a career for a little bit before I did this astrology stuff and tarot stuff, started my own astrology and tarot business. Jupiter rules my first house. So figuring out who I am and what I want to do and like what my issues are, like, like who I am in the world, what I'm doing in my life um, was definitely a big theme of like carrying, you know, carried out like this relationship stuff, my dreams, advocating for people. Um, and that was 
it also rules my fourth house. So really tr I was trying to change the family patterns of having better relationships in my family, bad relationships, dysfunction, alcoholism, all part of my fourth house, the rulers in the 12th house. So through even having my own relationship, I was trying to change these family patterns. And that has been a theme in my life. I'm still trying to do that as we speak. But that was generally a really nice time in my life having Venus rule. Mm. Then, okay, so when did things change? So it's not gonna just change with this distribution of the bounds when the Ascendant does, like when we have a different planet carrying things out, um, it also changes. So in March of 2004, so I had broken up with that boyfriend already, but in 2004, graduating college, and I was really trying to figure things out. So I still had Venus, um, ruling my life. So second house with Venus can also like it related to uh, preparing for the future, preparing my financial plans for the future, like career or business. So graduating college that related to that. But Saturn becomes the ruler here. And so I think that just was like trying to pursue my dreams and finding some harsh lessons and finding some harsh lessons with friends around then. So I graduated. I actually went to volunteer for a Catholic organization in Buffalo, but then that was the great. I was like, oh, my dream of like service and, you know, like doing things through a spiritual lens and helping people seemed great. And even like I thought about becoming a nun, but Saturn was here and it did cause difficulties. Um, I did not get along with my roommates. So I was, I was ha like, I had housing and roommates as part of volunteering. Like I had my expenses paid for. And like, I had a lot of difficulty and felt like an outcast with my group of people. And I saw the harsh reality of trying to fulfill your dreams, although I had a lot of good things happen. So um, Saturn, it's still in a good house. It's still going to bring good things, but through difficulty. And yeah, I was focused on what I was going to do for money, but it was more like I have Saturn ruling my second house. So I really had a lot of fear around making money and I still do. I'll be quite honest. This has been a difficult part of my life, even though I focus on it, even though Saturn has brought good things and community. So I focused on community, but there were difficulties with that. I was not quite jiving with my community and it was difficult. And, but I learned, I did learn a lot through that, but I learned how to be discerning about what I do to pursue my dreams and what friends to bring into my life, which is an ongoing theme. And I continued volunteer work after that. And I did work in like a group home, but again, harsh lessons related to that. And I learned to be more discerning with my career and I actually changed careers for a little bit. And then with the moon, we shift to the moon and that was in 2006. So through those years, I had gotten into another relationship. It was a bad relationship. It was kind of like exploring family patterns through living bad patterns, bad boyfriend, bad, bad. But in March of 2006, the energy shifted to the moon and I got out of that bad relationship and started to have a lot more fun and dates. And I believe I applied to, I applied for my master's in counseling program because I wanted to be a therapist then. So I'm going into more detail than I thought, but some of you guys may find this interesting. So I'm just going to go with it. Okay, so the moon became my fifth house ruler and Venus is here. Venus is squaring the moon. Yeah, so the, the moon became the ruler. It rules my fifth house. Um, it rules my eighth house. And so I did get like um, an assistantship to pay for some of that college. I was able, this eighth house, moon ruling the eighth house, I was also able to get a really cheap apartment with some roommates which was pretty awesome. So that eighth house brings that money in, like scholarships and surprise things. Um, and then the moon in the fifth house, I did, I broke, broke up with my boyfriend, had a lot of fun, started dating, moved in with friends. Again, this Venus rules groups of friends. And so it did shift into having a lot more fun and, and just generally having a good time and finding friends that I loved and having money come in and figuring out my career and being kind of free, like trying new things. Moon, moon energy can be like trying new things as well. All right, so I'll just go into a few more examples. Okay, so 2006, the energy shifts to Saturn. Okay, so Saturn became the ruler, and then we have the moon. So the moon ruled until 2010. So I was having fun, dating. I did get another boyfriend who would be my husband. 
So that was cool. But Saturn became my ruler. So in those years, I was working on my dreams for my career. I was hanging out with friends that I loved. We got this like Saturn opposition moon energy ruling like money, career, um, fun and leisure dating and money. So um, a lot of like positive things were happening. I did have money actually come in through my relationship too and through school. And so this Saturn, even though initially, so so the significations can change over time. And this is a good example, a good teaching lesson too of Saturn's not always, the planet is not always going to mean the same thing, okay? Because it does depend. So, you know, it shifted gears from when it was with Venus versus now it's with the moon, okay? So things change. So now I have Saturn and I am learning things about friends and groups and my dreams. I am learning some harsh lessons. Like I started working in mental health, a mental health hospital. It's so toxic there, just the work environment. Um, and I learned some harsh lessons. I did, I was doing things I love, but it was just like harsh lessons about the career. I ended up leaving eventually mental health because it's just so toxic the way it's run. And even though it's brought so many, um, so much help to people and so many good things, it's definitely a broken system in my opinion. That's my honest opinion. So I was learning that, but I was also hanging out with friends, having fun, dating my then, he was going to be my future husband, working on a career that I loved, learning about psychology and counseling, um, really loving that. And I had a, an, a, a, I worked at the college in the counseling center. I loved, loved, loved that job. So it was generally like a good time. And then it always, then it always shifts. Okay. It shifted to Mars and I'll just go through this quickly. So still Saturn ruling in my 11th house of hopes, dreams, and wishes, working on those. But then I have Mars in the 10th house. So now it's time to get serious, serious about career, serious about marriage, serious about children, serious about the things that I had the vision of what I wanted my life to be. This 10th house is like what I want my life to be, what others would approve of. So this is like what pub the public would approve of. And we always think it's our dreams, but we were told what our dreams are. So anyway, besides that, okay, I have Mars in the 10th house. Um, so that year, 2010, I'm going to go through these quicker. So 2010, I've got Mars as a big theme. That's when I got engaged and I was planning a wedding and I got married, but I also had some conflicts and difficulties. I had difficulties securing a job at the time and I also had doubts about my relationship and I did eventually get divorced a few years later. So there's a lot of chaos and conflict here and fighting. We've got Mars in the 10th house, but energy and drive to do something. And Mars rules my fifth house of children and it rules my 12th house of self-sabotage and hidden enemies. So some of my self-sabotage is trying to meet the expectations of others. We've got Mars ruling the 12th house. But anyway, with 10th house distribution, that may mean like marriage, career, kids, or whatever you want to be doing in the world. And that's what it meant for me. And for a while, I had a picture perfect life where everything was going. Um, but I've got my chart ruler in the 12th. So I made sure to mess that up. Um, but I, I'm grateful for it. I love my life and what ended up happening through the through those experiences. So I don't really care. Like, I'll, t I'll talk about it. Around the time where I was thinking of getting divorced was around 2013. So it was aspecting Venus. It's like, what do I want to do for the future? But then we hit Mercury as my bound ruler again. And Mercury, it would be Mercury in Aquarius. So, you know, it's like interesting because all of the bounds were going through Capricorn, which would be a more traditional experience wanting more of those traditional things and I did I wanted the traditional career kids marriage family all of those things um, and then the bounds shifted and I'm like I just want to rebel I just want to do all these things I just want to tear those things down because it's still Saturn ruled um, and be myself and do something revolutionary or new and it related to me my identity who, connecting to who I am which is part of my journey of the sun in the first house, but Mercury is in my first house and it's now my bound ruler. So it's me thinking, is this who I am? I feel I felt like I was just living a lie because I was just doing what other people expected of me and not really being as like free spirited or living. You know, I married, like I married, my husband was great, but I married him because it was time to get married. I did not, I did not, it wasn't like I fell in love and like, let's get married. I was like, it's time to get married. I want to have kids. And it was a lot more like a friendship than like a romance. And so I wanted romance in my life, 
you know? And it was me rethinking who I am and what I wanted to do and my intimate relationships. So around then, um, I did have children in this area, but that wasn't so much the focus. Like, I guess that was more during the moon, but the, the focus more shifted to who I am and wanting to rebel with this Mercury in Aquarius. And I really rebelled. So I hit Jupiter in 2015 and I completely rebelled. I got back with um, one of my exes who I felt was the love of my life, but he was super toxic, helped me carry out the toxic family patterns. Um, and I reunited with him, thought he was the shit. I thought he was my twin flame. I don't believe in that anymore. Um, it's because I'm separated now. And then, so how did I become an astrologer? This is my last example um, because they're like my next change isn't until next year. So I hit Venus here. And I'm also in a Jupiter year, so I'm also like tearing things down and being reckless and rebellious. People would say I'm self-sabotaging, um, but I, I do have a different way. So it's Jupiter and the things in the 12th can also be special gifts or a unique way of approaching things. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm rebelling, I'm being unique, okay? So we hit Venus in the third in 2019. And that is when I started to get into more, 2019 is when I got to more into new age spirituality. I started with A Course in Miracles and started getting more into new age stuff and like connecting with energy healers. And that's when I got into tarot and astrology and like fell in love, okay? And that's also where I got the idea to start a spiritual business because people who I was connected to in my network and my close group of friends had done that, had started spiritual businesses. I started with life coaching um, and then I got into tarot and astrology. But uh, um, during this period of starting my business, I've learned some harsh lessons from other people. I still have Jupiter carrying things out. So hidden enemies, um, difficulties with that, but I started a business. So Venus in the second house is starting a business. I didn't do it till later in life. Saturn rule things happen later in life, but it is focused on a third house of social media. So all of a sudden I wanted to do YouTube. People kept saying do Facebook, Instagram. I did it, I hated it. Got back into YouTube, kind of separated myself from groups of people that, I don't know, were pushing me in the wrong direction and didn't have my best interest at heart. Um, but basically 2019 is when I started my business. I left my job. I, I'm still tearing down the things I built with going with college. And that's when I had the courage to step away and do my own thing. And I'm still working on that. So in any case, I hope you guys found this video interesting. If you have any questions about this, you can ask me if you want to book a reading. I have the link in the description below. My website's valentinelister.com. And I was just showing this to you because this is something that I would be doing for you in your chart reading. If you want to know when is the big next big shift in your life or what, what was happening in the past, I am going to pull this up and I'm going to figure out when the next big change is happening for you. And I also add other techniques such as um, solar return and annual perfections as well to give you like even more of a scoop. Um, but I thought this technique was really cool. So I wanted to share you, share it with you. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to leave a video up here that I think you'll want to watch next. And don't forget to watch your weekly horoscope to see what's coming up for this week, guys. All right. I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.